Quotes on Consent by Murray N. Rothbard. Once concede the power of the people to consent, as well as the natural law of equal freedom from subjugation, and the logical consequence must be anarchism. It must be recognized that there are no just national boundaries per se, that real justice can only be founded on the property rights of individuals. National boundaries are only just insofar as they are based on voluntary consent and the property rights of their members or citizens. The right of property implies the right to make contracts about that property, to give it away, or to exchange titles of ownership for the property of another person. The right to contract is strictly derivable from the right of private property and, therefore, that the only enforceable contracts, i.e. those backed by the sanction of legal coercion, should be those where the failure of one party to abide by the contract implies the theft of property from the other party. In short, a contract should only be enforceable when the failure to fulfill it is an implicit theft of property. But this can only be true if we hold that validly enforceable contracts only exist where title to property has already been transferred and therefore where the failure to abide by the contract means that the other party's property is retained by the delinquent party without the consent of the former implicit theft. Hence, this proper libertarian theory of enforceable contracts has been termed the title transfer theory of contracts. Whereas an expanded market encourages increases in production and supply, theft discourages production and contracts the market. What distinguishes a criminal group is that its income, in contrast to that of all other organizations, is extracted by the use of violence against the wishes or consent of the victims. To protect the rights of the individual, General and prior majority consent to a rigid constitution that severely limits the powers of government is a far better guarantee than constant reliance on the good sense and discretion of the elected people's representatives. If this is anti-democratic, so much the worse for democracy. Voting does not imply voluntary consent. The libertarian is precisely interested in legalizing all interrelations, whatever, between consenting adults. To ensure the dominance of the new statism over public opinion, to ensure that the public's consent would be engineered, the governments of the Western world in the late 19th and early 20th centuries moved to seize control over education, over the minds of men, over the universities and over general education through compulsory school attendance laws and a network of public schools. The public schools were consciously used to inculcate obedience to the state as well as other civic virtues among their young charges. Furthermore, the statizing of education ensured that one of the biggest vested interests in expanding statism would be the nation's teachers and professional educationists. Intellectuals are the sort of people who believe that in the free market they are getting paid far less than their wisdom requires. Now. The state is willing to pay them salaries both for apologizing for state power and the modern state for staffing the myriad jobs in the welfare regulatory state apparatus. In past centuries, the churches have constituted the exclusive opinion molding classes in society. Hence, the importance to the state and its rulers of an established church and the importance to libertarians of the concept of separating church and state which really means not allowing the state to confer upon one group a monopoly of the opinion molding function. The ruling classes have gathered unto themselves the intellectual and media elites who are able to bamboozle the masses into consenting to their rule to indoctrinate them. Here was the quintessence of John Locke and the 18th century libertarian creed. It is axiomatic that all men are endowed by nature with inalienable rights. The proper aim of government, as derived from the consent of the governed, is to secure those rights. Nothing other than this function justifies government's existence, hence the right of the people to revolt against any government destructive of those aims. It is not the business of law 
properly the rules and instrumentalities by which person and property are violently defended to make people moral by use of legal violence. It is not the proper business of law to make people to be truthful or to keep their promises. The business of legal violence to defend persons and their property from violent attack, from molestation, or appropriation of their property without their consent. There are only two ways for men to acquire wealth. The first method is by producing a good or a service and voluntarily exchanging that good for the product of somebody else. This is the method of exchange, the method of the free market. It's creative and expands production. It is not a zero-sum game because production expands and both parties to the exchange benefit. The second method is seizing another person's property without his consent, i.e. by robbery, exploitation, looting. When you seize someone's property without his consent, then you are benefiting at his expense, at the expense of the producer. Here is truly a zero-sum game. Not much of a game, by the way, from the point of the view of the victim. No matter how bloody or despotic any state may be, it rests for its existence in the long run, and not so long run, on the consent of the majority of its subjects on the voluntary servitude, as La Bonnet first phrased it, of the bulk of its victims. Its mass acceptance need not be active enthusiasm. It could be passive resignation. But the important thing is that it rests on the willingness of the masses to obey the orders and commands of the state apparatus, to accept the dictates of the oligarchy, to pay its taxes, to fight its wars. It is peculiar that while liberals are in favor of any sexual activity engaged in by two consenting adults, when these consenting adults engage in a trade or exchange, the liberals step in to harass, cripple, restrict, or prohibit that trade. And yet, both the consenting sexual activity and the trade are similar expressions of the liberty uh, in action. In contrast to voluntary exchange, taxation is a matter of leaping in and coercively seizing people's property without their consent. Taxation, then, is purely and pristinely robbery, period. I challenge any of you to sit down and work out a definition of taxation that would not also be applicable to robbery. The first great lesson to learn about taxation is that taxation is simple robbery, no more and no less. For what is robbery? Robbery is the taking of a man's property by the use of violence or the threat thereof, and therefore without the victim's consent. And yet, what else is taxation? Those who claim that taxation is, in some mystical sense, really voluntary, should then have no qualms about getting rid of that vital feature of the law which says the failure to pay one's taxes is criminal and subject to appropriate penalty. But if taxation is robbery, then it follows, as the night, the day, that those people who engage in and live off robbery are a gang of thieves. Hence, the government is a group of thieves and deserves morally, aesthetically, and philosophically to be treated exactly as a group of less socially respectable ruffians would be treated. Aggressive violence means is that one man invades the property of another without the victim's consent. The invasion may be against a man's property in his person as in the case of bodily assault, or against his property in tangible goods, as in robbery or trespass. In either case, the aggressor imposes his will over the natural property of another. He deprives the other man of his freedom of action and of the full exercise of his natural self-ownership. Invasive action may be defined as any action, violence, theft, or fraud, taking away another's personal freedom or property without his consent. Government is in reality established by the few, and these few assume the consent of all the rest without any such consent being actually given. Welcome to Keith Knight, Don't Tread on Anyone. Today we have a woman named Lady A joining us. Does it stand for Lady Anastasia, Lady Anarchy? Well, I guess we'll, we'll never know. Uh, she works with BYO Vault, BeYourOwnVault.com. This is where you can keep your cryptocurrency secure. Today, we are going to talk about consensualism 
for doing the philosophy. And if you like getting the Bitcoin, not using the state's currency, you, could, you can check out byovault.com. Lady A, thanks so much for joining me to talk about consensualism. Thanks for having me. I have missed talking to you and chatting about all of these cool topics. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, so what is consensualism? Well, um, I guess I'll start with, I mean, I mean, consensualism is really about the, the philosophy of consent and consent between, you know, two or more people. And really the, the crux of this is, is right in the word. I think that all human beings should have consensual relations with each other, you know, whether that is in sex, which is the most prominent like version of consent that we're seeing in our society in the last couple of years but that should extend to everything that should extend to the money that we use to you know the the jobs that we take to the to the to the things that we give our money and time and labor to basically everything all of our actions should be based on consent because that's the most respectful and kind of um, peaceful way to interact with other people now, that seems like a very non-confrontational idea that I think the vast majority of people will accept. However, what you say is that you take this principle of consent and then you extend it to a group that goes by a number of different names. The group is sometimes called government group or the state group or the Congress group or the police group. Um, why is it important and uh, well, what does government have to do with consent and violating consent? Well, because if you look deep down into how government actually functions, not what they say, not what they promise, but the way that they actually function in day-to-day -day activities within our society, you very quickly find out that what they're doing isn't so consensual. It seems like it's consensual. It seems like it's honest. It seems like it's good for everybody. But let's say taxation, for example, right? All of us in society think that paying taxes is a good thing. Right, we're taking a little bit from us who are so fortunate to be in this, you know, beautiful free country that has such a high standard of living compared to all other countries in the world. And we're working and so a little bit of that money goes into our taxes and that pays for our roads, that pays for welfare for the less fortunate, you know, that pays for all of these great and wonderful things that we have in our country, our education, our, you know, our, our everything, right? But when you look at it closely, you realize that if somebody doesn't pay their taxes, well, then there's going to be big, strong men with guns at their door. There's going to be hell to pay for not contributing to the society. And you're like, okay, well, just pay your taxes and then the big bad men won't come to your door. But what if the organization that you're paying this money out is actually handling these services really poorly? What if our education isn't really educating our children and is indoctrinating them instead or selling them lies or, or making them into factory workers in a world where factories don't really exist anymore, or at least not in America they don't because all of them have been outsourced to other countries. What if the roads in our neighborhoods are full of potholes and we're constantly like banging our cars into these holes and nobody is fixing it? What if somebody is being, I don't know, what if somebody, somebody is coming and getting robbed at their business and the cops don't show up until hours later and can't do anything or won't do anything to help that business owner? So the entire idea that everything that the government does is consensual it's kind of a lie. Sure. And that really gets at the heart of the disagreement. So while we could have a discussion about do schools educate, do they do a good job? That's very, that's really deep. I mean, 12 years, do you get what you pay for? Is it worth all the time and energy? That's a really long conversation. But if we look at the heart of it, you don't have the right to force people to fund something you're against. Just imagine if any other organization, if the Mises Institute said, we are forcing people to fund us, but in return, we'll give education. So what mm -hmm. if the Koch brothers did this, or if Amazon said, we take money by force, but in exchange, we provide education. That doesn't count. That, that's still illegitimate. The fact that you might reap a benefit. So what we're saying here is regardless of benefits you may reap, uh, consent still matters because you don't know what other people's value systems are. You might really think I got something great here. If it's so great, they will purchase it voluntarily. Um, 
one of the uh, major uh, things that uh, consensualists, voluntarists run into is that uh, government is consensual because uh, in a world where people vote, the government is actually an extension of the will of the people. So much like I choose between Jack in the Box or Taco Bell and In-N-Out, I vote for a restaurant, I vote for a candidate. Does voting make government consensual? Well, I definitely don't think so. For one, I don't vote. So then all of the people who are voting for these things, well, are they doing it for themselves or are they doing it for me? Or are they doing it for somebody else? Like there's no, there's, what if people choose to opt out, you know, for whatever reason that they choose to opt out for, and that's completely personal and, and completely up to them. What if they opt out for voting because they don't like any of the services that are provided, even if there's right, there's, there's been this whole thing with the coronavirus, even if it saves one life, right? Well, even if, one person disagrees, you are now, they are not consenting. And if they are not consenting, everything that you do to try to make them consent is either coercion, it's threatening, it's violence, and it's going against their free will. And if you're going against somebody's free will, isn't that the same thing as enslaving them? Of course, yeah. And uh, th this is uh, always something we hear that, well, we need government to protect minorities or they'll be at the will of the majority. Well, what do you think government is? And if it's just one person, well, then you'll still be able to achieve your ends in a world of 7 billion people if one person doesn't opt out. Well, makes me think uh, they realize that uh, their services are not as in high demand as they believe. Um, it has been this way for thousands of years, says the government advocate. So since, I don't know, ancient pharaohs of Egypt, there has been a mechanism called government. And now you libertarian consensualists come along and think uh, that you know better than all these other people. Uh, why are you so sure about something when for thousands of years, so many millions of people have disagreed? Well, consensualism, the beauty of it is actually that I really don't know. I could be completely wrong, right? But the point is that when two people are consenting to you know, to commerce, to a relationship, to a family, to, you know, to a land purchase, etc. cetera, they're, they're, they're individuals. And these governments have been trampling on individuals for a really long time. That doesn't make it right. Just because slavery existed for a really long time doesn't make it right, right? It didn't make it right then, and it doesn't make it right now, and it won't make it right in the future. And consensualism gives us the opportunity to not follow that system anymore. Like maybe humanity was wrong about all of these governments and maybe we just hadn't had a way to get out of it before. Maybe now we have the technology and, and the consciousness level to actually find a new system that isn't working. I don't know how you can look at history and not see the atrocities that come specifically from these organizations. You know, whether it was a monarchy, whether it was a church with the Spanish Inquisition, right? Whether it was the Soviet Union or, or Germany under Hitler. Like we're seeing governments create so much chaos and so much violence and so much genocide. And what, we're gonna sit here in, in the 21st century and say, that's okay, it's always been done that way. So we should just keep going. I don't think that's really an argument either. Could you imagine if the free market had committed the atrocities in the 20th century that governments have? It's, it's just unbelievable <laughs> that they accuse us of the thing that they have the most, or they're like, oh, well, if there's homeschooling, people might be ignorant. I go, have you ever seen the people that government schools yield after 12 years? They don't like, uh, like a third of them know the branches of government or who their senator is or who fought. Uh, in the American Revolution. It's just incredible. Yeah. All right. I'm sorry. Did you want to comment on that? Um, no, I'm good. <laughs> I'm I mean, sorry. I mean, you, I know. I mean, you, you hit, you know, you hit the nail on the head. It's that's, that's the whole point, right? Like everybody's pissed at Jeff Bezos for making millions of dollars, but he had built his company from scratch. And if you're using Amazon, 
then you have no right to complain about it, okay? If you don't like what Jeff Bezos is doing and you don't like Amazon, then go to an actual website, right? Go to an actual small business and buy from them instead. But how many people actually do that? How many people get off their butts, walk outside and go to their local toy store instead of buying something on Amazon Prime? How many get up and go and find a website of a small business owner that is barely has any money to spend on marketing, right? Has, has a very small network that they can, that they can actually market to who like Googles that and finds out and buys directly from their website. No, you go to Amazon. So you can't say like, and you have the freedom to do that, right? So you can't say that Jeff Bezos is a shithead if you're actually supporting everything that he's doing by buying products from his site. I know it's like finally a case of actual consent and yeah. you know and, and this is actually voting with your dollars and that they're against but voting for two tyrants that the council on foreign relations gives us every four years somehow that is consensual all righty and finally once you have provided these arguments to the government advocate they will say well if you don't like it you should leave how do you respond well you can't <laughs> and that's and that's the whole thing when something is not consensual it means that the other party is doing something to put you in a corner they're doing something like coercing you or violently harassing you or threatening your life your property your livelihood your land your family they're threatening you that's 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 the whole thing of being unconsensual is you are being threatened to consent to what they want and many people have tried to do this. People have moved out into the woods. They've lived in national parks. They've moved to other countries. But why is our entire planet controlled by these people who only understand force and violence and coercion? Where do you want me to go? Where is there a place where there are no governments? Because I will move there tomorrow. I will literally pack up my bags and my cat and I will get on whatever transportation that I can find. I will even pay for it myself. You don't gotta pay for my transportation, okay? Like I will pay for it and I will go and I will move there and I will call all my friends and they will move there with me as long as you fucking promise to leave us alone. But there is no place like that. That place does not exist on this planet. Maybe it exists on other planets out there, but so what are we supposed to do? Well, I don't think that system is good for me or you or anybody else. So you can, you know, tell me to leave. But at the end of the day, I'm trying to do this for everybody, right? I'm trying to spread this message that all of our interactions should be consensual for you and for me and for everybody, because that's the way that individuals win. If you're doing everything that is consensual, then, then nothing, nothing bad is happening to you. And if something bad is happening to you, you have the right to defend yourself because if somebody breaks your consent, you have now, they forfeited their right to consent at that point in time, right? We can say, you know, everything after that could be considered revenge and that's a very gray area, right? And that's the very individual and, and, and it, it's based on your conscience, right? If you feel like it's the right thing to do to go after your rapist a bunch of weeks later to get him, and if you, if your conscious is telling you that that's the right thing to do, then that's on you. You have to live with that for the rest of your life, right? But in the moment, if somebody is trying to rape you and you shoot them or you gouge their eyes out or you kick them in the balls or you slit their throat, that is fine because they broke your consent. They broke your free will and therefore they forfeit their right to do that too. And that's, that's what it is. It's a balance, right? If somebody's doing something wrong to you, you have, you have the right to stop them from doing it. But if you guys, neither of you are doing anything wrong and all of your interactions are consensual, then there's no reason for violence. There's no reason for lying. There's no reason for, you know, for manipulating because you're getting what you want and the other person is getting what they want. And if you can't get what you want from that person, then move on. There's, you know, 8 billion of us. Go talk to somebody else. Go live with somebody else. Go do business with somebody else. It's, that's fine. Sure. A um, couple things as far as, well, you know, it's a tricky situation. If someone assaults you, uh, at what point is it okay to seek revenge or get restitution? How much do they owe you? These are all very complicated things that for some reason uh, people all of a sudden care about when it's us. But when it's the state, it's like, oh, I'm sure you're dealing with it. Thank you. 
Uh, so, so yes, it's a hard thing. It's hard for voluntarists, consensualists, fascists, communists, minarchists. It's hard for everyone. Even if there's a government court system that doesn't automatically tell you how many days a rapist or a, you know a home invader should spend in jail. So while there are a lot, there is a lot of ambiguity rather uh, surrounding these ideas. None of the ambiguity justifies the existence of a state where one group has more. Uh, rights or the right to do something no other group has. Of course, the example is just if Amazon did what the state did and said, Amazon made a law, now you have to abide by it or Amazon will cage you. And uh, you have to send your kids to the Amazon school and you have to pledge your allegiance to Amazon. It's, it's just so ridiculous. We'd never hold anyone else to yeah. these standards. Well, so, uh, and the, the other thing on the, if you don't like it, leave, I guess that applies to pretty much all crime. Uh, if I am continuously breaking into your house, you can leave, obviously. The question is, who has the obligation? Do you have the obligation to leave or do I have the obligation to stop initiating violence against you? Um, right. So uh, again, everything that they can say about, oh, this might happen. What if Amazon screws you? Does the government ever screw people? I mean, are, has anyone ever been falsely imprisoned? Has a cop ever unjustly killed someone? Has a government ever unnecessarily invaded a country and killed civilians? I mean, it's just so obvious that um, everything they say applies tenfold. Um, did you uh, have any books that you want to recommend? Any uh, people that you'd like to uh, recommend uh, for uh, people to look out for if they're interested in uh, consensualism or voluntarism? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there is so many amazing people out there. I would definitely start with, so if, you, if you're a very straightforward kind of person, right, and you like to just get through the sugar coating and the bullshit, I would absolutely recommend looking at Mark's, Mark Passio's Natural Law Seminar. That's really what, you know, lifted all of the cobwebs out of my head when I watched, it's, it's eight hours, right? But it's totally worth it. It just, I felt this like fog lift from my mind and, and, and saw things that I had always known, but very succinctly stated. Um, Larkin Rose is, is amazing on these topics. And, you know, he talks about how our belief that this authority figure is out there is actually really, really twisted. And, and, and it's actually because they've been brainwashing us and abusing us. And when you're an abuse victim of these kinds of mafia state organizations, sometimes you get confused about what is actually, what it's actually like to be treated as a real human being, as a, as a, as a free human being, as a human being that, you know, deserves to, you know, to consent to things that happen to them or that they do, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And, um, I would say, uh, you know, reading the book Sovereign Individual is awesome. And then one of my favorite new books that I read a little bit ago was actually um, Bitcoin, Sovereignty Through Mathematics by, I would, I would really screw up his name. It's, it's very Eastern European. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, at, the, at, at least we got the title. We got Larkin Rose, Mark Passio, yeah. both a, a couple of uh, great uh, communicators. Well, Lady A, I want to thank you so much for your time. I'd like to end with a quote by Spontaneous Order, the Capitalist Case for a Stateless Society. The illegitimacy of the state rests on the fact that it exercises control over resources that its agents never acquired through original appropriation or voluntary exchange, and it does so without the consent of the rightful owners of said resources. Thank you for watching, Keith, and I don't tread on anyone. Thanks, guys.